What's going on, YouTube? <clears throat> Your boy Big Play right here. And uh, I already mentioned to everybody on Facebook and Twitter that I'm recovering from pneumonia right now. So um, you just have to bear with me. This is uh, actually one of my better, better moments throughout the day. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you on this topic about how to count the uh, protein in your actual food sources throughout the day. And I'm making this topic because um, in the last video I made where I mentioned that you can gain muscle without going on, going on an actual bulking phase, someone raised a question. You know, I mentioned that I, I aim for about 240 grams of protein a day. And someone said, you know, how do you do that? You know, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, and things like that. <coughs> Before I answer this question, and go into details on this topic, let me make this statement, okay? If at all costs, overcome the hurdles to get to the point that you want to get to as far as your bodybuilding and fitness goes. <clears throat> and I say that because it is a whole lot easier to maintain your gains than it is to get where you're going. Okay, so it's a whole lot easier for me to maintain my body weight and, and composition and things right now than it was several years ago when I was first getting started. You know, I had to put way more, way more work in getting where I am right now as opposed to where I am right now and maintaining once I have a bad day. It's a whole lot easier. So just overcome these hurdles as far as your diet is concerned and you'll be happy that you did. Okay. Um. There's a lot of sources on, on 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 the internet, then they all say something different as far as the actual protein content and different types of foods. So this is just a cover all formula. For your meats, and okay, before I answer, say this too, when it comes to my macros, <clears throat> I count my protein and my carbs. My fat, I really don't count because as long as I keep my carbs and my protein where it is, everything else should kind of fall in line, should fall in line, and most of the time it does. And because I'm on, you know, multivitamins and all the other good stuff, I'm pretty sure that, you know, everything evens out. So the only thing I really focus in on my diet is my actual carbs and protein. And when it comes to my actual protein, um, what was I about to say? Yeah, when it comes to the actual protein, you know, your main source of protein is, is your meats. <clears throat> it's pretty much protein in every meat you can think of, just about. And, you know, you can also get protein from um, beans, um, I would, beans, uh, dairy products, milk, uh, peanuts, things like that. And the fruits and vegetables, I'll get to that a little later. Yes, you can get protein from that, too. But when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, if you really want to have a, if you really want to um, take care of your protein needs, you want to get them from a more solid source um, like meats. Okay. When it comes to your dense type meats, and when I say dense meats, I'm talking about meats like uh, your pork chops, your beef, um, your bison, your deer. You know, all those tight meats. When it comes to those dense tight meats, you want to count about 25 to 30 grams per four ounces. You know, four ounces is about the average serving size of meat. It's about the average si serving size. So count between 25 and 30 grams. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of give and take inside my little, little five gram uh, wall here, but you will drive yourself insane <clears throat> trying to figure out the exact you will drive yourself insane trying to figure out the exact um, protein content of each type of meat once you're just starting just just count 25 to 30 grams and move forward okay there'll be a lot of other things when it comes to your fitness goals that you should give more attention to than just a couple of grams of protein so that's for your dense meats now your less dense meats like chicken and seafood, when it comes to your chicken and seafood, count 25 grams to 20 grams per four ounces. And again, four ounces is just the average size. So 
next time you go to the store <clears throat> and you see an actual, you know, when you can, you can actually measure out four ounces of chicken. Just get a good idea of what four ounces of chicken looks like. Get a good idea of what four ounces of, of any of those meats look like. That way, when you go out to eat at a different restaurant or you get invited to a social gathering, let me just say social gathering, whether it be a party, a, a gathering, a get together, you know, formal. Whenever you go to any of those type of events, when you're served food, you can pretty much eyeball your food and figure out how much food you are taking in. Figure out the nutri nutritional facts of the food that you are consuming. Okay, so that's for your uh, that's that's basically the formula that I have followed ever since my second year of um, bodybuilding and fitness. Um, you know, I really wasn't big on dieting my first year, which is why I didn't see as great of results as I wanted to. But, you know, my personal trainer and that um, nutritionist helped me with my diet plan and workout plan in my second year of bodybuilding. And that's when my results and, and, and body just took off to the next level. It's once I tweaked my diet and once I tweaked um, my workout according to what he recommended. So... I'm just giving you first-hand advice here. This is not something I'm guessing about. This is first-hand. This is the formula I've been using to reach my bodybuilding goals. So, <coughs> excuse me. When it actually comes to uh, my lifestyle and how I actually get my protein in, best case scenario, I'm not working. I'm at home. I'm off. So, I get pretty much all my nutritional needs from food besides the shake that I may have after my workout. Worst, like I say, worst case scenario, I take about three scoops of a four scoop serving size of a weight gainer, you know, and uh, move on with the day, eat as much as I can from running around, you know, I'm, um, peanut butter is a good, uh, a good substitute if you, you can't get to your next meal like you want to. Two tablespoons of peanut butter has about nine grams of protein in it. Um, it's not going to hold you over a long time, but, you know, just to eat something, you know, to continually give your body uh, some nutrients, you can you can do that. You know, um, peanuts, I love honey roasted peanuts. Um, that's my favorite type of peanut, so you can eat those. Um, and uh, the busier my day gets, the more snacks that I just have in between meals to kind of fill up my uh, diet for the day. Um, once I actually sit down, you know, I'll try and get as much as I can from that meal. Um, if you ever feel stuffed during a meal, you have to pick and choose what you're going to eat last. If you're stuffed, I always get more protein than anything else. If I have a, if I have a piece of bread left on my plate and a, a piece of chicken left on my plate, I'm going for the chicken. I'm going for the protein. You know, protein is a building block of muscle. <clears throat> so, um, that's that. And, uh, you know, like I said, still on the worst case scenario, um, I'll end my day with another weight gainer shake. And so, you know, I'm getting almost half of my protein source from shakes on a bad day, you know. And like I said, that's on a bad day, which doesn't happen all the time, maybe about three days out of the week. So, um, there you go. I hope these tips help you all. <clears throat> I'm not going to do my get swole thing because it's probably just going to launch off a uh, coughing frenzy <coughs> so uh, until my next video um, you all go out there and get swole <laughs>